Looking for magic cards or magic carps? On the new CFB Marketplace you can buy directly from local game stores. Support the channel by using the referral code LVD at checkout and be entered into the month-long giveaways, culminating into a Black Lotus and 1st edition Charizard. Hello and welcome to another Standard Games video. Today we're taking a look at a blue-red control deck featuring three copies of Lear, Disciple of the Drowned, as voted on by my supporters on Patreon. This is the build-around card in the deck, a 5-mana 3-4 legendary human wizard saying spells cannot be countered, that applies to both players, and each instant and sorcery card in our graveyard has flashback, with its flashback cost equal to its mana cost. So the game plan of the deck is to control the board early on with our various red burn spells, and then we can eventually get a hand with our blue card draw effects until we can deploy Leer with a lot of mana in play, so we can immediately leverage those extra cards in the graveyard and get a hand that way to close out the game. Our eventual win conditions include two copies of Hall of the Storm Giants, which can turn into a 7-7 creature, as well as some of our sideboard lessons, like Mascot Exhibition making a whole bunch of creature tokens that we can also flash back a second time with Leer. So our deck is definitely designed to beat up on creature decks like Mono White and Mono Green, which are among the most popular best of one decks in standard at the moment. We're going to be pretty weak against the various Epiphany combo decks, as we don't have many counter spells as those are number with Leer. We could potentially splash black for discard spells to help address that problem, but of course Epiphany having Fortel means the opponent can safely tuck it away in exile, so even discard spells have limited utility in that matchup. So let's take a look at the rest of our deck at 1 mana. We've got a full playset of Consider as a cheap cantrip. Can take a look at the top card and put it in our graveyard if we want to, and then draw a card. So we can potentially put more instants and sorceries in the graveyard for Leer. Two copies of Fading Hope to return the creature to its owner's hand. If mana value was 3 or less, we also get to scry one. So this shines especially against the mono green deck. Being able to bounce creatures like Old Growth Troll is a nice tempo play. Can bounce tokens as well to get rid of them permanently. And then also allows it to potentially play Leer if we have 6 mana in play. And then keep up Fading Hope by having it in our graveyard. And then if the opponent tries to remove our important creature, we can still bounce it back to our hand to save it and then we can potentially make that play several times. So it's also nice to have a 1-mana bounce spell to bounce our own creature. Then we've got the full playset of Frostbite with a bunch of snow lands to go with it to deal 3 damage at instant speed, potentially great at killing creature lands like Faceless Haven, which is in both of the monocolored aggro decks. Then at 2 mana we've got 2 copies of Cathartic Pyre, dealing 3 at instant speed. Can also discard up to 2 cards and then draw that many cards. Useful if we're playing against a control or combo deck, where we can maybe discard some of our burn spells to hopefully find more useful stuff instead. Then 2 copies of Cinderclasm, which we're typically going to play kicked for 3 mana total, dealing 2 damage to each creature, but can also deal 1 to each creature for just 2 mana. So this shines against a mono white aggro deck, which has lots of low toughness creatures. Can also be used in a pinch to kill a whole bunch of bird tokens out of the Epiphany combo deck, so that can potentially slow down the opponent's clock if they don't have their own Hall of the Storm Giants to apply pressure with. Then we've got two copies of Thundering Rebuke, dealing 4 damage at sorcery speed to a creature or planeswalker. Perfect for taking out Old Growth Troll, for instance. And then the full playset of Expressive Iteration, which is more of a 3-drop, as we all know. Want to play this and be able to play a land from Exile to get the full 2-for-1 experience. Then at 3 mana we've got two copies of the Celestus as a nice ramp artifact, making one mana of any color if we tap it. It also introduces the day and night cycle, and whenever it switches from day to night or night to day, it allows us to draw a card and then discard a card and gain one life. So nice looting effect, once again can get rid of removal spells in matchups where we don't need them, or maybe loot away lands in the late game to find more action. And the more instants and sorceries end up in the graveyard, of course, the better for Leer. And it is legendary, but of course we can loot away the second copy if we draw it. And it also plays well with our various 1-mana instants, as we can still play those after playing Celestus on turn 3 for maximum mana efficiency. And the more mana we have, the better our Leer gets, as we'll have more mana to flashback cards out of the graveyard right away. Then we've got two copies of Demon Bolt, a card we can foretell and then cast for single red to deal 4 damage to a creature or planeswalker at instant speed, so it can even take out a Seekus Chariot, for instance, after getting crude. We've got the full playset of Divine by Zero as our main counterspell in the deck, 
but the beautiful thing about Divide by Zero in this deck is that it doesn't actually counter anything, so it still works if we have Leer in play, and then it can act as a retroactive bounce spell if uh, the opponent already resolved something, so that's great, and we can also potentially use it to bounce our own Leer back to our hand, much like Fading Hope, to save it from removal, allows us to learn so we can grab one of our sideboard lessons, including environmental sciences times two to find a land and gain two life. We've got teachings to draw cards, especially if the opponent has more cards in hand than we do. Start from scratch can deal one damage or destroy an artifact, so perfect for dealing with a chariot. We've got introduction to annihilation as our only answer to enchantments in the deck, as we can exile target a non-land permanent and its controller draws a card. Two copies of Mascot Exhibition, finally, as one of our main win conditions to help close out the game. And of course, all these lessons can also be brought back with our Leer from the Graveyard, so great synergy there as well. Then we've got two copies of Behold the Multiverse as another card we can foretell on turn two, because if we actually look at the curve in this deck, Expressive Iteration is a card we want to play starting turn three, Demon Bolt we can foretell on turn two, and Cinder Clasm is often more of a three drop, so if you take a look at Behold as a two drop with foretell, it actually lines up in our curve much better, and then can scry two and then draw two, so nice card draw effect that we're playing over Memory Deluge in this deck, as a flashback on Deluge is a bit redundant with Leer in the deck, and Behold is a bit more flexible thanks to Fortel. And then finally two copies of Burn Down the House as an extra sweeper dealing 5 damage to each creature and each planeswalker, or we can make 3 one, one Devil tokens that deal 1 damage to any target when they die, so that can also give us an extra win condition, especially in those control matchups. And then of course our three copies of Leer that we typically want to play with a lot of mana available, so we can also protect it with maybe one of our bound spells like Divine by Zero or Fading Hope, so it doesn't immediately get removed before we can get value from it. And then our mana base has 25 lands, as we don't want to miss any land drops if possible, including two copies of Hall of the Storm Giants as a nice win condition, six snow-covered islands, nine snow-covered mountains, and four of the tap land that also counts as a snow land for Frostbite, and then four of the blue-red pathway as additional mana fixing. So that's our deck, now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the play with a reasonable hand, lots of interaction for creature matchups, and an iteration to hit my third land. So hopefully no blue-red deck. Right, green is fine. And then want to dodge Ranger class if possible. Lotus Cobra is fine. Could Cinder Classum, could keep Cinder Classum as an answer for Chariot tokens. And then maybe Cathartic Pyre to be mana efficient. Although I currently don't have a third snow land, so the three damage could be good in the future as well. So Frostbite. Alright, there's my third snow land. And then Celestus we can draw. And still have a Frostbite available. Okay. Sadly, Old Growth Troll a little bit trickier to deal with. Although could still combine a Cinder Clasm with another Burn spell. So I'll probably take the hits. This turn play Celestus, keep up two mana. And then next turn, if let's say they play Chariot, I can kick Cinder Class and plus use another burn spell for Troll. That sounds reasonable. And then wait a little bit longer on Expressive Iteration. Right, Faceless Haven makes an appearance. Important that I can Frostbite that. Or I guess uh, Pyre also works. Werewolf Pack Leader resolves. Troll hits for four. Opponent taps out for Ranger Class. Alright, so that dies to the Kicked Cinder Clasm. And then I probably pyre the Pack Leader. Would be annoying if they can put a counter on Faceless Saven, because then 3 damage at instant speed no longer answers it. And then I guess I could do this all at instant speed. Although there is a risk of Inscription or Snakeskin Veil putting counters on stuff. 
So it's still f safer to main phase. And then I'll iterate next turn. Mammoth plus maybe a level up on Ranger class. Nope, another Ranger class. Alright, Divide, Behold. I'll take and then... Probably Behold in hand. And then I'll have to Divide now. Could bounce Mammoth, could bounce one of the Ranger classes, but they're still level 1, so I'll bounce Mammoth. And then do I learn for Mascot Exhibition? Probably. Could also go for Introduction as an answer to Ranger class, but they have two. And then I can foretell Beholds to be mana efficient. Would be a nice spot to find another sweeper. I don't think playing mascot exhibition is gonna play out well for me, especially if the opponent has something like Blizzard Brawl. They get to draw with a pack leader and it's gonna be pretty ugly, so think I need to go digging. Frostbite's not the worst. And a Fading Hope. Alright. Still tempted to main phase stuff in case of plus one counters or hexproof. Can consider finding Divide. I'll draw that. And then I can Frostbite. Let's say Kazandu Mammoth. Fading Hope, the token. Finding another Fading Hope, which I think I'll keep. And then I'll divide the pack leader now. And learn for... Could try Teachings as a way to refuel. As I know I can play Fading Hope, so I'll be down to one card in hand. Alright, so opponent's also down to one card in hand now. So I'm liking Mascot Exhibition plus Fading Hope instead. And then I want to keep Fading Hope as a potential answer to the Old Growth Troll token as well, but we'll see. Can maybe bounce the Pack Leader or the Haven if that gets activated. Another Troll. Can also try to block and then if they try to go for a pump spell, I can still Fading Hope in response. Another Divide by Zero, so that makes it easier to leverage Teachings. Maybe Bounce Troll over Ranger class, although the fact that they didn't level up Ranger class probably implies they have some instant in hand, but it could just be an Inscription. Alright, and then Start from Scratch could also kill the Cobra. Although then I don't have the mana to teachings here. So maybe go for sciences. Second so sciences, play a land. Play teachings and still have fading hope available in response to any shenanigans. Alright, that worked. And I'll pass. And that would be a great time to find Leer to pull ahead. Opponent makes a troll token, which... 
feels like a good target for Fading Hope right now in response to any tricks. Don't need another Celestis. All right. So we're slowly starting to turn a corner, although there's still double ranger class to worry about. Which they're going to start leveling up. Let's consider firsts. Could also let it switch to nighttime and then play these at instant speed. Although there might be spells I want to cast at sorcery speed with consider. Maybe it's worth it to go digging. And then discard the island. Alright, there's Lear, perfect. Levels up Ranger class. And now the question is, do I want a Demon Bolt before attacks in case I want to trigger Pack Leader? Or do I wait? So they've got two Ranger classes that will put counters on stuff. Could maybe wait for them to assign those counters and then Demon Bolts. Maybe I should consider first, see what else I can find before I decide. Alright, that's a great draw, so I'll pick that up. And then maybe divide the troll right now before that turns sideways alongside pack leader. And I still have a demon bolts. And now I could get a start from scratch for Cobra. Or I could get Annihilation to start dealing with Ranger class, especially since we can cast it twice with Leer now. We'll let them attack. And this feels like they have a pump spell. But uh, let's see. Could double block pack leader with the two larger tokens. Trade inkling. Then our opponent might just pump with a pack leader which would give it 7 power, trade for both, which I guess is fine by me. If they go for like a kicked inscription, things probably still play out fine given the demon bolts. Alternatively, I could put 4-4 four, four on Cobra, put these two on the pack leader, and then what happens? They would still trade if they go for like a kicked inscription on the token, they would kill everything but I would still trade and I guess the Cobra lives eh, I guess that's okay let's try this and then if it's just a snakeskin veil demon bolt still ensures the trade and I get to keep my 4-4 they could activate Pack Leader to trample over, or they can replay the troll. Might as well take action. And it's time to play a Leer with a very full graveyard. So I've got all the interaction I possibly want. I don't think I'm answering the Ranger class just yet, but we'll keep up all our bound spells. At level 3 on Ranger class. And yeah, our opponent concedes. Lear's just gonna take over here, and we've got plenty of ways to protect it. Sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a fine hand. Get Cinderclasm for creature decks and some card draw for other matchups. Still need to find my second red. Alright, Neverwinter Dry points towards a ramp deck. Could actually Cinderclasm just to kill it before they get to sacrifice it. 
Divide by zero should be good against the ramp strategy, although I also need to hit my land drops, so we'll still graveyard it. Okay, innkeeper's fine, so we'll foretell. And then... Next turn we can maybe draw some cards. I'm not opposed to main phasing, behold. Okay, so I find another foretell card. Rebuke I'm probably not gonna need. Alright, two more copies of Divine by Zero is nice. Small chance I fire off a Cinderclasm if they play more one toughness creatures. Renan 7 is a little bit large for Cinderclasm. Could still cast it. Destroy the gifts nature grows. Divide by zero. I cannot bounce the token from Renan 7, so it's a little awkward there as well. Yeah, I think I'll still just Cinderclasm here. Keep the board small. Reason not to do so is if I draw another burn spell, I can maybe combine it to take out a tree folk. I guess we'll wait. And then take one. Alright, so. Yeah, it's not looking great here. Can play Leer just to have Leer in play for next turn. I could divide by zero, bouncing Renan 7 before they get a chance to plus. And then what do I learn for? No amazing answers for the tree folk. Could also loot with divide by zero instead of learning to try and find a burn spell, or like a fading hope would be nice. And then bounce the run before they can plus. I mean, I could go for Introduction to Annihilation, but that feels pretty desperate. Alright, I'll uh, foretell this. So finding a burn down the house would be ideal. Alright, speak of the devil. Well, actually we're not going for the devil, we're going for the damage. So, that was a timely top deck. Got another one. So when to hit my land drop, I could play a Leer. So if I play a Leer, there's nothing amazing to get back right away. Probably want to wait until I can Leer plus Divide. So let's try and hit my land drops with Behold and keep up another Divide by zero. Alright, so land is good. Considers fine. And I'll pass. Nothing from our opponent, so maybe they've got a bunch of... Seven plus mana cards in hand, like Cyclone Summoner. Doesn't bother me, but I think I'll still bounce it. And then learn for Teachings is not going to draw me a ton of extra cards at the moment. Could go for Sciences. It's kind of a save bet. And then Land. Tap Land is kind of awkward, so we'll Graveyard that. Alright, so now I could play Leer and have Divide by Zero up, which seems good enough. Leer is a wizard, so it doesn't get bounced by Cyclone Summoner. It's also interesting. And then we have to make an effort to try and close out the game as soon as possible. So... 
I could let the summoner resolve. Don't have a great way to kill it necessarily. So I guess we'll divide. And then maybe grab my first mascot exhibition. All right, Demon Bolts gets me closer to killing a Cyclone Summoner. So play a land for turn seven. So next turn I can maybe Mascot Exhibition plus Divide. So for now hit for three. And I could Science this to have my land available. Foretell a Demon Bolts. And then I can still go for Behold the Multiverse end of turn. Your opponent being stuck playing seven drops into a known divide by zero is kind of painful for them. Can do the same with Coma if that shows up instead. A little bit tricky to keep track of what's in exile, what's in our graveyard and what's in our hand. But they've got the Demon Bolts in exile. Looks like our opponent may have given up. Once beholds and then can consider as well. Fading hope, I guess is fine. One mana answer to Cyclone Summoner. And consider. And probably don't need more lands. Alright, so now I could Mascot Exhibition and still have a Divide by Zero available. Which seems prudent but feels like our opponent has disconnected and yeah I mean double divide by zero still in the graveyard to flash back not where you want to be as a blue green ramp deck feels like a rough matchup although of course did get lucky to top deck burn down the house otherwise the game would have been over a long time ago but also shows the importance of looting with the learn instead of grabbing a lesson. Sometimes it's better to dig a card deeper, otherwise we may not have been able to top deck burn down the house in time. And our opponent explodes. Sweet. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a fine opening hand. Probably fine to play a tap land here. Turn 2, Fertile Demon Bolt, take it from there. And turn one snow covered plains is what we like to see. Turn two aspirants we'll have to take out as soon as possible. So cards we want to find include our various sweepers, of course. So I think I'm okay going for consider here, or I can foretell beholds and demon bolt, which is also pretty mana efficient. And then play the snow land. So let's foretell and then put a stop in the opponent's turn so we can demon bolt before they get an extra counter. Could also fading hope if needed, we'll see. Alright, opponent's moving to combats. I think I'm still killing Aspirant here. And then I might end up using Fading Hope on Usher at some point, although the more expensive creature we bounce, the better, of course. So we'll take three. Haven, good target for something like Frostbite eventually. And there's Redan, potentially punishing our Snowlands. Luckily, we played most of them already. So if I really want to wipe the board, I would have to probably go for Fading Hope. Raidan, consider. Have to Fading Hope end of turn. So I might want to consider now in case I draw a tapped Snowland. So yeah, lots to consider here. And another Behold I don't think I can afford to keep. Alright, Pyre helps. So now I can just kill Raidan. And keep Fading Hope for something else. We'll see if they want to animate Faceless Haven. Could also be 
a fine target. Alright, Putin moves to combats. And then I think I'll uh, just pyre right down here. They could play another copy and then we'll have to see what to do next. Right now just making the devil tokens could also be a fine use of our mana. It's gonna be a legion angel instead, that's pretty effective. So it's gonna generate a string of flyers. So I really want to be able to just wipe the board here and then get Leer in play. Hopefully the opponent doesn't have a removal spell for it, but it has to be a pretty specific one. All right, another Leer instead. So let's behold to try and hit my land drop. Demon Bolt, another burn down the house. Keep Demon Bolts. Or do I? It's really imperative that I find a land here. Yeah, I guess I can bottom both. Right, there's my land. And then now I can Fading Hope. And then next turn play Leer plus Fading Hope as a one mana play. So just want to avoid taking too much damage. So I think I'm fine bouncing the Haven. And then I'll do it now so they cannot use the mana to boast Usher. Could also burn down the house first, of course. Another Fading Hope I'll keep. Just cheap interaction is great with Leer. And a familiar. All right, so we'll burn down the house. And then next turn, we can play Leer on a relatively stable board. I've got a backup in case they have like a fateful absence to destroy it. All right, right down. I guess I'll just bounce right now. And then iteration seems fine to keep. Still gonna play a Leer with Fading Hope available. And I can consider if they don't make me use it. So if they do have Fateful Absence, they could attack with Faceless Haven and then Fateful Absence Leer after attacking. Uh, if they have another land, they could potentially attack with Haven after killing Leer, and that would kill me. So that's why being able to kill those creature lands is so important. Luckily Leer dodges Skyclave Apparition. So there's not many ways for them to remove it. Maybe a Brutal Cathar, but that can also be bounced in response. Alright, put on just replace Raidan, that's fine. Second Haven and a Skyclave as a 2 2. Alright, so let's just bounce Raidan. And our opponent's just gonna pack it in. They know Leer is too much for them to handle. Sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a reasonable hand if we can find land number 3, because then Celestus fixes for blue as well. I'll try it. On the draw we should be able to find a blue source. And then a turn to rebuke at the very least to have some interaction. Opponent with a snow-covered islands, snow-covered mountain, smoldering egg. Nice target for rebuke. And then next turn Celestus lets me consider as well. Don't feel the need to keep up Divide. At least not yet. Disruption on Celestus works. 
All right, sadly, I'm about to miss my land drop, so I might have to consider in the hopes of finding blue mana, or I can keep up Divide and then consider end of turn. Yeah, let's try that instead for opponent taps out for like a gold span dragon. That would be bad. It's going to be iteration. And nothing else. All right, I guess uh, they maybe misclicked and were planning to cast something else. So if I consider now, what can my opponent do at instant speed here with the iteration? Feels like it was just a misclick. So I'll consider and then we'll draw the land. All right, still have a divide by zero. So they seem to be playing kind of the blue red epiphany combo deck. That's the iteration they actually wanted to cast. Do I want to divide that? Yeah, it doesn't really accomplish much since they can still replay it and still hit a land drop with it. I'll keep divide for epiphany. Although I would like to hit my land drops in the meantime. A couple cards I would love to loot away. Sadly, don't have the Celestis to count on. Alright, let's iterate ourselves and hopefully find an untapped land. I did, and then another iteration or divide by zero. Both are good. I think it's iteration to keep hitting my land drops. And then I want to play Leer once I have the mana for Fading Hope as protection. Uh, it is Goldspan Dragon, so I can divide. And then... Don't hate Environmental Sciences. So I could... Iteration first. Or I could try and resolve Leer while the opponent's mostly tapped out. And then still have a Fading Hope. Although... Let's see. Yeah, I mean, I guess if I play Leer, they Goldspan, I can take the hit. And then kill Goldspan with like a Thundering Rebuke. While having Fading Hope to protect Leer from maybe a Dragon's Fire for four. That's reasonable. Although they could Dragon's Fire, plus maybe do something else. Alright, so there's the Gold Span, which will hit me for four. Not gonna try and bounce it, because then Dragon's Fire would still be problematic. And there's a Dragon's Fire. We know about another Gold Span in hand. They could have also used a Gold Span in play, because once, you know, the 4 damage gets locked in, it's not like bouncing the Dragon is going to change that. So now the question is, do I want to burn down the house? Do I want to replay Leer? If I let my opponent untap, they could just start chaining together epiphanies and kill me that way. So I could sciences to hit my land drop and then just one for one with a dragon. I think that's fine. And then I can try to rebuke the second one with Leer. Opponent might have their own fading hope here. Which would also be an answer for Burn Down the House. They could bounce their dragon, make a treasure. But they probably wouldn't be able to play both dragons next turn. Yeah, we have to get through those eventually. Yep, there's a Fading Hope. 
So your opponent's got two dragons and two unknowns. And a Hall of the Storm Giants, also potentially a problem. Now, Lear does make it so the ward from Hall doesn't work, so I can actually, like, bounce it for one mana, for instance. So, for now, I think it's just going to be Lear into Rebuke the Goldspan. Alright, Divide by Zero, going to send that packing. So that's not great for me. Potentially taking 11 from Goldspan and the Hall um, can maybe find some interaction with Consider, but I guess my land comes into play tapped, so that's not the case. So do I try to iteration then? Sure. And then in my hand goes Frostbites. Play Mountain and pass. And let's see for dead. Epiphany kills me. Double gold span. So I'm taking eight. So I could play Leer, rebuke one of the dragons, and then have Fading Hope as a one mana answer for Hall, since we can ignore the ward cost thanks to Leer's ability, and then maybe take four from Goldspan down to two and figure out a way to answer Goldspan next turn. Yeah, that seems reasonable. The other option is digging for a second burn down the house, but that still leaves me in trouble against the Hall. So I think Leer it is. And if they have another divide by zero, we're also dead. Dissipate even. Alright, I think that'll do it. Yeah, the blue red matchups are not going to be great. We were somewhat close to stabilizing, but a few well placed counter spells did the job for our opponents. Alright, GG's. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. I think we've got a keeper, thanks to the Celestus. Any third land gives access to blue mana. And we've got some removal we can play early on. Up against Mono Green once again. Pack leader. I'm just going to Pyre right now, before they can protect it. Next turn, Celestus, maybe plus Consider. Ah, turn 3, Troll. Could die to Demon Bolts. Another pack leader. Might be better served killing the pack leader over the troll. And don't need more mountains. Alright, so not gonna play a Leer just yet. I can, however, iteration and then with an untapped line still demon bolt a pack leader. Can always play island if needed. Alright, so in our hands, another iteration or frostbites. 
I guess now we're back to potentially wanting to keep Demon Bolt for the troll, and then I can Frostbite the wolf right now and foretell Demon Bolt. I guess that's fine. And I can maybe Leer plus Frostbite next turn. Alright, Chariots resolves. Problem with playing Leer is that a Fight Spell could still take it out. Unless I guess we can Demon Bolt in response, which we can. So playing Leer is relatively safe. Unless they have multiple instants or Fight Spells. Although we would still be taking a substantial hit. If I want to keep up Demon Bolt in response, I would still take 8. But then next turn, Cinderclasm cleans up all the cat tokens. And I can also maybe Frostbite in addition to Cinderclasm to clean up the troll. So I think tapping out for Leer is realistic here. And then we'll wait and see what happens. Pack leader. Two crew the chariots. And a ranger class. So now our opponents tapped out. So I'm probably gonna demon bolt the chariots if they crew it. before it gets a chance to attack and copy a cat token. And then we'll probably just take four here. Nope, opponent's still sending the team. So down to six we go. And another tapped Kazandu Valley. Alright, so I have six mana total. Lots of burn spells. So I think we just clean up the board here. Kicked Cinderclasm is three, three mana left. And then I can play Unkicked Cinderclasm to deal with Pack Leader. And Frostbite to finish off the troll. How does that sound? I have a backup Leer, so like putting making a troll token and fighting is not the biggest concern. So I'll play Unkicked Cinderclasm, since I don't want to lose Leer for free. And Frostbite seems fine. So I shouldn't be in any immediate risk. I'll still keep Leer back, just in case of like a Frog Hemoth or who knows what else. We're a control deck, so we can take things slow. Just make sure we don't die to some random card. And then once we take over, we can close out the game very quickly. Alright, so opponent can make another troll end of turn. They played another troll. Probably start with iteration. And Thundering Rebuke, Divide by Zero, both excellence. I guess we'll uh, put Divide in hand and Rebuke the Troll right now. And then I can Demon Bolt the token they make end of turn. Still keeping a layer back. I 
They do actually have a green mana floating here. So Snakeskin Veil could have been punishing. So we might see a main phase token to fight Lear. No fading hope, sadly. But we've got a backup in hand. And another rebuke, I guess we can keep. We got to see the value of both rebuke as a two mana deal four, as well as demon bolt as an instant speed deal four. So they both have their merits. And then I'll rebuke with the one from our graveyard first. Could have played it even more safe by waiting until I can play a Leer and have Divide by Zero backup. But opponents down to three lands, so not too many combination of creatures and fight spells that get us. Celestus so goes to the graveyard. And we can Pyre the Wolf. And then now I feel more comfortable attacking. I'll keep a Frostbite. Opponent's gonna play it out until the bitter end. Chariots can go back. And we'll get a Mascot Exhibition to start closing out the game. All right, and our opponent packs it in. Sweet, so yeah, was a lot of back and forth. Needed some well-timed removal spells, and of course Lear eventually to take it home. So overall, this blue-red control deck can definitely win against the various monocolored aggro decks. By no means are they guaranteed wins. Of course, the opponent could still be on the play. We might miss a key removal spell or a land drop and then the game ends, whereas the control deck really needs to kind of have everything go according to plan. The uh, aggro decks can sometimes get those free wins, which we don't. So by no means a walk in the park, but we can definitely hold our own against those monocolor decks, which make up the bulk of the best of one meta game at least. Then when it comes to some of the blue epiphany decks in the format, those will be a lot more challenging and I don't expect to win those very often. But it's kind of pick your poison right now in standard, try to beat the aggro decks or try to beat the epiphany decks. And there's not many that can do both successfully and reliably. So that'll do it for today's gameplay. Want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed. And as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel. And you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.